Hello again YouTube, Mad Dog here, welcome back to my channel. This video is a bit of a um, an experiment in some ways and hopefully today what I'm going to do is demonstrate how to make some simple rub cotton material and that is basically a piece of 100% cotton which we then saturate with water, absolutely wet it all the way through and um, basically then we use black powder, meal, meal powder which is this stuff, this is my homemade meal powder which is basically the raw form of gunpowder from all those years ago when the Chinese invented this stuff and um, that uh, particular mix that I use is 75% potassium nitrate 15% air float charcoal um, in this case it's pine and 10% uh, um, sulphur, flowers of sulphur um, just a footnote, if you want to make fast um, black powder, uh, then the potassium nitrate, you need that as fine as you can get it to start with. So get yourself a mill and really, really mill it down until it's as air float or as fine uh, a mesh as the charcoal. Then you'll have yourself some really good effective black powder. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> Once you've made your black powder, I won't go into all that. And all the legality behind it over in the UK. I've got a small batch that's very much less than 50 grams for experimental use so I'm keeping myself within the law. It's not contained at all, it's open to the atmosphere um, therefore it isn't an explosive. So what we do is we'll take the said patch of cotton material, in this case a 100% piece of cotton cloth. This is the same stuff that I use to make my char cloth with that I do sell on eBay and is very effective. And also I'm going to experiment the same method with a piece of my duped twine netting, which I also sell on eBay. Very good fire tinder, fire lighter. And basically you saturate them with water like I've done here with these two pieces. Lay them on a baking tray or, or some hard surface. Same with the netting. Now this has been done for literally hundreds of years with 100% cotton. I'm yet to see or know anybody that has tried it with jute netting so this is where the experiment comes in I'm going to try it with the jute netting so basically I'll start with the uh, piece of cotton what we do is make sure it's nice and flat as we can we'll take a good handful of the uh, black powder sprinkle it all over that, um, that cotton and we'll rub it in basically into that wet soaked piece of cotton it's got to be a hundred percent cotton really for this to work properly or, or at all to be honest a bit some more and we're really working it into the fibers hoping that you know the chemical structure of the black powder will get absorbed into the fibers of the cotton because it's wet it would be drawn into them fibers and the same on both sides And that's why it's called rub cotton, because you're rubbing the stuff into the fibres. Obviously, if you're going to do anything like this, you know, common sense prevails. Never smoke while you're doing anything like this. You know, and no no open flames. You know, let's, let's keep it safe if you're going to do this sort of thing. Now, what I'm failing to tell you all is, the, I mean, I'm not reinventing the wheel here, but as you all know, basically what we're trying to achieve is a piece of cotton cloth that's saturated with basically black powder, so that when it's left to dry, and we do that by hanging it out in the conventional, conventional method, just hang it out with a peg, clothes peg, let that dry for a few days until it is touch dry, most of that surplus will rub off, and you've got a different form of fire lighting where you can use a flint and iron or a ferro cerium rod, obviously that will work immediately. And as soon as you throw a spark onto this, it's like the next step up from char cloth. Um, that will take a spark instantly and and be quite vigorous, let's say, in, in its flammability because of the impregnated gunpowder, black powder. So I'm going to do the same now with the, uh, the jute to netting. I'll just add a little bit more water onto this. 
Uh, I, I mean, ideally you need to do both sides, but because it's ute and it's it's open weave, I'm not really too too concerned about doing both sides because because of the open pores, the material, uh, as in the gunpowder, the black powder, will saturate through both sides just because of that structure. So I want to get all that good stuff on there and give it a good old mash around. Like I say, with black powder over in the UK, I'm not going to go into all the legalities, look it up for yourself. There are strict, obviously, rules and bylaws governing the use of anything that can be deemed an explosive, obvious, obviously over in the UK. Um, but the long and short of it is for black powder, if you make a batch that's less than 100 grams uh, for use that is pretty much immediate and not contained, therefore not storing it in a container once you make a batch of black powder and it's very simple very easy to make it's an old like I say Chinese uh, recipe once you make a batch of that and store it within a container you are now breaking the UK law under the explosives um, act and you can you can face a heavy sentence for that so please be mindful of what you're doing never contain pre-mixed um, black powder you can actually buy the three chemicals separately and keep them separate and that's perfectly fine to do so and perfectly legal as soon as you mix them three items in any quantity or ratio you are breaking the uh, explosives uk law if they are contained if they're left to the open and you're using them immediately and the batches are less than i believe it's 100 grams i will say 50 grams to you know to be cautious um then for experimental use that's fine for educational purposes let's say but um, please be careful when you're doing anything like this but it, it does show the method that once you've once these are dried and they're left out to dry um, you will be surprised at the results that you get from this they're quick and easy quite simple and back in the day when people used to use muskets and black powder rifles you always had a, a powder horn on your person and um, usually some form of cotton material, sweat rag, uh, patches for your rifles, barrel, whatever it may be. And uh, therefore by doing this, um, you've now got a form of char cloth that isn't you know, prone to the damp, the moisture, and has to be perfectly dry for it to work, etc, etc. This is a pretty robust version of making your own char cloth or fire, fire lighter that you can carry with you that is potentially safe to carry so what i'm going to do now is let all this dry cut back to the next bit of the video and um, let's uh, see how it works stay tuned okay a couple of days has passed and the uh, rub cloth has now dried out quite well so that's what we've ended up with quite a gray colored piece of um, cotton material seems to have been impregnated with the uh, the black powder quite well now as has the jute twine netting. The weaves are quite full in places, so I've got to be careful when using this. Um, I'm going to obviously throw some sparks at it from a ferro rod, <coughs> which hopefully should pose no problem at all to ignite this stuff. Um, obviously, the black powder then acts as a accelerant, obviously, uh, you know, intensifying the heat, giving you a better chance of lighting your fire, especially in more awkward conditions, let's say. Uh, the other thing I'm going to try is, with a bit of a flint and iron, this is just a rough-assed piece of high carbon steel um, off a file. But it's got to be a good quality file if you're going to do this. Not a cheap Chinese thing, you've got to get a good high quality uh, high carbon steel file to begin with. The best bet, just a little footnote, is get yourself down the flea markets, the boot sales, etc. Get yourself a bunch of, even if they're dull, <coughs> excuse me, um, files, well worn. You're going to break them up anyway in a vice. Grind them flat on the striking edges. You want them flat and a good sharp spine because don't forget the idea of flint and steel is the, the flint should be harder than the material. So what you're trying to do is shave off pieces of metal which whilst you're doing that, you know, combust and oxidise and burn. That's what creates the sparks, obviously. So 
just for those of you guys and lasses that are new to this that don't know that's uh, the method of the principle of flint and steel anyway I digress <laughs> yet again I'm going to attempt to use the flint and steel method on both of these pieces cut, cut bits off and try it but a little warning a little footnote Traditionally, when you use char cloth or charred material of any sort, you would put it across the divot on your piece of flint, strike, get the ember established, blow it, put it in your bird's nest, blow it to flame. Do not do that with this because of the, the viciousness of the accelerant being black powder, you will burn yourself. Don't ever have this stuff in your hand whilst you're striking it, else you will burn yourself. So always try and throw sparks into this and um, ideally what I will choose to do if I have it is um, a light piece of char cloth or excuse me some jute twine or some netting or something else first and then drop that ember onto this stuff to extend the life of your coal which you then need to blow to flame or not in this case because it should do it itself but we'll see how we get on so I'm going to cut a few bits off now take it outside and uh, show it some sparks stay tuned okay what I've got here is um, the uh, rubbing uh, cloth cut into three patches same with the uh, jute twine I've got my uh, ferro cerium rod and a basic uh, flint and iron kit flint and steel whatever throw some sparks um, and what I've also done is I've got a bit of a stick here which I've split just real fast at the top here and a small spike at the bottom so I'm intending on driving this into the ground and placing some of the black powder uh, material in there so that I can throw sparks into it easily without burning myself see how we go okay first up the ferro cerium rod on a piece of the rub cotton material let's see how this goes Okay, that's pretty effective. Oh, oh. So you can see straight away the black powder is lit, but the resulting embers after the main initial flame are still glowing hot and red. That will make a brilliant coal now to add to any bird's nest to blow to flame. So that's the um, just scrape this out to one side, the soil is wet down here I'm doing everything as safely as I can so um, okay let's try a piece of the jute twine netting just the same it smells fantastic <laughs> okay okay that's pretty cool seems to be burning a slower, a slower rate I guess that's down to the open weave oh that's throwing a lot of heat out and this is picking up but those embers are absolutely orange not red they're orange which indicates a hotter flame and it's burning longer okay that's the ferro rod Okay, for the final method, I'm going to use flint and iron, or attempt to. Um, I've placed the rub cloth in the split stick that I showed earlier on. I've just simply pushed that into the ground here. And what I'm attempting to do <laughs> on this windy, horrible day, it's a different day today. I experienced some, let's say, um, ambient noise problems. So I had to cut filming, and here I am again today. So um, The reason I'm doing this is purely so I don't, hopefully, incur burns to myself so I'm going to use a standard bit of char cloth a little piece of flint here see if we can catch an ember on this and then transfer that into the rub cloth hopefully he says like I say it is very windy today not ideal for this at all well, there we go I don't know if this will pick up We've got an ember pretty much straight off. I'm going to transfer that now also into the split stick and hopefully 
that should catch the um, the rub cloth. And there we go. Like I say, you don't want that on to happen whilst you're holding um, anything. So as you can see, be cautious if you're ever going to do this. Ideally, please just take this as a demonstration because let's be honest, in today's day and age, um, this is like flintlock pistol, musket rifle era. We don't really need this to employ this method for fire lighting. There's many safer options out there. Um, just for a demo, this is basically guys and lasses, but as you can see, hopefully now he says, our embers we're transferring to a bird's nest and blow to flame. As it is quite windy, as you can probably hear today, I'm going to shove that back in the, into the ground and extinguish it safely. Cover it over with some wet soil, so I know that's going nowhere. Um, so basically, that's a quick demo of uh, cotton, uh, rub, rub cotton, um, infused with black powder. Again, the same can be done with jute twine. I guess it's like circa, I don't know, 18th century sort of technology, but... If you are going to try this sort of thing, please, please, please be very, very careful. Always stay within the law of wherever you are, especially over in the UK. We have tight, stringent laws on this sort of thing. Um, do your research before doing it and don't get yourself burnt. You know, it's not worth it. So anyway, hope you find some of this useful. Take care out there and I'll see you all soon on the next one, which won't be long. Mad Dog signing off. Yeah!